You probably already know that the periodic table is a very important tool for chemists. It contains lots of information about the 100 plus elements that make up all of matter. Info like the number of protons, the mass, the charge for the ions, and even some properties of the elements all appear on your periodic table. So for the next 10 minutes, we're going to customize our periodic tables with some additional useful information. You'll need your own copy of our class periodic table and some pens or highlighters of various colors. Use your neatest handwriting and pause the video to allow yourself enough time to do a good job. You're going to use this table for the rest of the year in chemistry. So let's get started. We'll begin with this gap on your periodic table. Notice the atomic numbers for these elements near the gap. 55, 56, 71, 72. There are elements missing. Actually, no. Those elements, 57 through 70, are written down here. In other words, the elements at the bottom of the periodic table actually belong up here. So why'd they put those elements down there to begin with? Well, if they put the elements in the gap, you'd end up with a really wide periodic table that would look kind of funny on a paper. Okay, let's get some notes on your periodic table, beginning with a period, which is a horizontal row of elements on the table. These periods are given numbers, which we'll add over here. And what about the two bottom rows? Well, remember, those aren't periods 8 and 9. Those are actually part of periods 6 and 7. Next, let's label the vertical columns, which are known as groups or families. These are already numbered 1 through 18. Some tables use this alternate numbering. A number of the families have special names. For example, group 18 is also called the noble gas family. And group 17 is called the halogen family. On the left side here, we have the alkali metals. But remember, hydrogen is not in this alkali metal family. It's not even a metal. I like to think of hydrogen as a bit of an oddball. Next to the alkali metals are the alkaline earth metals. Speaking of metals, Let's label the transition metals, which are found in the middle of the periodic table. You may have learned these as the d-block elements. And at the bottom of the table, we have the inner transition metals, as they are located in a gap next to the transition metals. Many of these elements we've discussed so far have the term metal in their name. The alkali metals and alkaline earth metals and transition metals. Are all these elements metals? Well, no. Let's separate the metals from the nonmetals. We'll draw a zigzag line on our periodic table to separate the metals on the left and the nonmetals on the right. So here we have the metals, and over here the nonmetals. Some students think that nonmetals are gases. But as we'll see in just a minute, not all nonmetals are. Now let's identify some elements that are neither metals nor nonmetals. These are the metalloids or the semimetals. They include boron, silicon, arsenic, tellurium, germanium, antimony, and polonium. Now metals are shiny. They're good conductors of heat and electricity, and you can pound them into sheets and pull them into wires. Nonmetals are generally poor conductors that are not malleable, ductile, or shiny. So a block of iron or copper would be a shiny conductor that can be hammered into a thin sheet. But a piece of carbon or charcoal, or a hunk of yellow sulfur, those don't typically conduct, and they're not very malleable. So what about those semi-metals, or metalloids? Well, they have some properties of both metals and nonmetals. They might be described as semiconductors. 
Now let's add physical states to our periodic table. I'll begin by adding blue drops to my periodic table next to the elements that exist as liquids at room temperature. Of course, elements can be converted to liquids by changing the temperature or pressure, but we're considering them to be at standard conditions. The two liquids on the periodic table are mercury and bromine. Now let's note the gases on the periodic table with a red circle. The gases on the periodic table include an entire family, the noble gases, and hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. So all of these elements in nature would exist as gases. We won't bother noting all of the solids with their own mark. Let's just remember the remaining elements are all solids. Now we will identify the elements that are not found in nature, those known as the synthetic elements. Because they're unstable, these undergo radioactive decay. These elements are generally only seen in significant quantities when they're synthesized in a lab. I'll mark these with a purple triangle. There's a trick to finding these. Since they are synthesized, they don't have an average atomic mass from the naturally occurring isotopes, as most of the elements do. Rather, they'll have a single mass reported for the most stable isotope. And this mass is a whole number, and it's written in parentheses. So, the heavier elements on the periodic table are all synthetic elements. And this makes sense because nature doesn't like cramming together lots and lots of positively charged protons into a nucleus. They repel each other. There are also two more lighter elements that are radioactive and don't occur in nature. Number 61, promethium, and number 43, technetium. These are the synthetic elements. Finally, let's add one more thing to your periodic table that will be very important in upcoming lessons. Several elements on the periodic table are always found in groups of two in their elemental state. These are known as diatomic elements. In other words, they're made of two of the same atom. There are seven elements on the periodic table that exist as diatomic elements and I'll identify those with a blue asterisk. The diatomic elements are nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. The last diatomic element is our oddball, found on the other side of the periodic table, hydrogen. One way to help you remember where these are is to notice that they kind of make a seven on your table. Well, except for the oddball, hydrogen. So now you have a bunch of helpful notes on your periodic table. Keep it handy and use this information to help you on your assignments and tests this year.